Hi, everybody. I'm Jason Neiman from Good Brand Company. We're a marketing partner with Givens Estates. And um, we're going to go ahead and launch a poll item today. Um, we're, as some of you know that have been on our webinars in the past, we like to just throw a few polls out and just get your feedback um, right out of the gate. Um, and then we'll also be um, pushing through a few of them uh, throughout the webinar as well. The other thing that I'll mention uh, right before we sort of really hit the ground running is um, we've got a lot of content to cover today. And um, based on that, um, we are going to try our best to get to questions, but most likely what we'd like to do is get your questions. Um, please feel free to send them in on the Q&A um, on the chat. And what we will do is if we don't get to your question, we will absolutely have Leslie uh, follow up after the webinar and answer your questions specifically. Um, I think what you'll find today is um, we've done a pretty thorough job of getting what we think should be some of the anticipated questions um, answered. So like I said, you may find that your answer was already, uh, your question was already answered throughout, but we'll do our best to get to those if we've got some extra time or if uh, Leslie can, can contact you at the end. Um, so with that, Jean, can I, can I kick us off and get us started? Yes, please. Okay, great. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. Um, it's a beautiful day outside, at least around this area, these parts. Um, and what we're gonna talk about today is we're gonna talk about the dollars and cents of um, what the situation at Friendship Park will kind of look like. We're also gonna be giving you um, some general information in regards to Gibbons Estates and its position in the marketplace as well. Um, the other thing that we're going to do is I'd like to introduce a few of our, a few of our people that are going to be speaking today. Uh, Jean LaRoe is our marketing director. You're all familiar with Jean. She's been on all of our webinars and will be uh, on the next one as well. Um, we've got Alan Squires here. He's our chief financial officer and um, he's got a lot of expertise and, and some background that um, he's going to be talking about some of the things that are really important today as well. And then for those of you that have been on before as well on, on any of the other webinars we've been doing, Leslie Lang, our marketing representative, is also on. And so she is going to um, give you guys basically the overview of what, it's, what, what the fees are like, how that works, all those kinds of things. So, you know, in some of our other uh, webinars, we've been talking about, well, what does this place cost and how does that work? So we're going to get into some of those things today. So without further ado, um, I would like to pass it to Jean to give you a little bit of background about Friendship Park. Um, for those of you that have already been on these webinars, it might be a little bit of a refresher. And for those of you that haven't joined us in the past, um, it'll be good new information for you. So turn it over to Jean. Great, thanks Jason. Alrighty, I'm gonna start out with a little snippet of the map of our campus just to give you all a little bit of an idea of where Friendship Park is on the Givens Estates campus. What we decided to do was we, um, we had some older residences in this area and we, we knew that they needed to be replaced and we went out to the market and did um, some feasibility studies as well as some focus groups with several hundred participants and we came up with a plan for what we wanted to build on this spot on campus called Friendship Park and it's actually always been called Friendship Park so we're continuing with that name of this area on the campus. It's really conveniently located. Um, you can see with the um, the ye yellow area where Oxford Commons and Asbury Commons are, those are the the buildings with the primary amenities such as dining and wellness and lots of art studios and library and, and things like that. So Friendship Park is conveniently located right there in the heart of the Gibbons Estates campus. Um, what we decided to build are one bedroom den apartments, two bedroom apartments and two bedroom den apartments. So we have some uh, various sizes ranging from 900 square feet up to about 1350. 
There are going to be 80 apartments uh, spread across two buildings. We, we refer to them as phase one and phase two. The buildings are gonna be complete in the fall of 2021. So the first building will be ready about August and the second one will follow probably in the October timeframe. So about three, month, three months, of, two, three months apart from each other. Um, some of the features that were really important to our participants in the focus groups were things that we were able to incorporate in these homes. And I'm gonna show you now a picture um, of what it's gonna look like when it's finished. So we were able to take a picture using a drone and then put the architectural drawings on top of a real picture of the site. So this is what Friendship Park will look like when it's all finished in about a year to 15 months from now. Um, a lot of these apartments on the ground level will have walkout patios. Um, if you don't have a walkout patio, you've got a balcony. So you, everybody has their private personal outdoor space. Um, we're going to actually connect to these buildings via covered walkway back to the Asbury Commons building so that if there is inclement weather, you know, every once in a while we get those rainstorms here in Asheville, you'll be able to stay dry um, on your walk over to the main complex. Um, a lot of the apartments have windows on more than um, one side, there are mostly corner units, and if they're in the middle, they often bump out a little bit, so you have windows on two or three sides of your living areas, which add, um, gives you an opportunity to have lots of natural light, and that was really important to those folks in the focus groups as well. So we're really excited about these apartments, and um, so we've been doing this four-part webinar series, and today we're going to talk dollars and cents, why you know, what it um, takes as far as the financial commitment and the kinds of things that we feel are important for you to know about Gibbons Estates and our financial position. Um, so, you know, we're super excited about having you all join us today. Thank you, Jean. I love how you get so excited when you see this this I area of you, <laughs> your, your face kind of lights up. You love to see it. I, I appreciate yeah. that. It's going to be a beautiful part of the campus. It really is. Um, okay, well, let's turn it over to Alan. Alan, I'd love for you, if you could, um, just to do some general overview um, about Gibbons and then maybe kind of go into some of the details, give a little bit of an education through financially what is um, a life plan community and how does that work and where you're at. So I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, Jason. Um, as I as we get into the dollars and cents, I'm going to try to stay away from numbers as much as possible because uh, people tend to get sleepy if I do too many numbers, but I do get <laughs> very excited about the numbers and uh, I, obviously it's, it's my career. So, um, but Gibbons has been around since around 1977. Uh, we're a nonprofit corporation, and why, why that's important is that we're mission driven. Um, we have a local board of directors, and I think one of the most important things for me is that, um, you know, nonprofits, it's a little bit of a misnomer. You can have profits, but the thing about the, the money is instead of going out to shareholders, it stays in the community. So any money we earn, is invested back into our communities. So we are a life plan community, which means that we have, we, we have a variety of options for you to come in to Gibbons Estates from apartments, cottages. Um, we also have assisted living and we also have skilled nursing. So, and we also have home care, which is becoming a very important part of uh, Gibbons Estates these days. So the important thing is you come in and there's a continuum of care here to take care of our folks. Um, we also have, as a, a nonprofit community, some of the things that differentiate us or, or make us a good option is we do take Medicare and our skilled nursing. We also take Medicaid. So, um, and also being a nonprofit, we are, we do take, uh, we do take uh, contributions and donations, and we're able to issue tax deductions for those. We also have a sizable amount of endowments built up. 
And so the endowments help on a number of things from helping us capital wise to when folks, um, when we have folks that run out of money or need help with, with healthcare costs and, and, and things like that, small things too, that we do have endowments that are available to help those folks. And we never kicked anybody out of giving to states. So, um, you know, that's for uh, lack of money. Um, so that's important for us. We also have, are able to um, have some tax advantages with that. And I'll just point this out right here. This is a letter from our accounting firm and they do it every year. And it says that you can take a certain amount of, of um, the fees, you can count a certain amount of your fees as um, a medical deduction. So in for last year, it differs a little bit every year, but for last year, um, for um, single folks, they could take 13, over $13,000 as a medical deduction and couples could take over $18,000 as a deduction. So that's one of the important things about being a nonprofit. As far as leadership here, our CEO, myself, and our executive director at Given to States have been here 96 years, 96 years of experience. So, and during that time, we've had steady growth and improvements at, at Givens. We, we've grown quite a bit. We're um, one of the heart, one of the 100 largest uh, life plan community organizations in the United States. Um, so, and the reason that's important is we have stability. There's things that we've encountered before that, you know, that don't scare us that we've able to handle. And I'll talk more about that as we go through the, um, as, as we continue on. One of the things about um, given to states in the state of North Carolina is we're regulated by the Department of Insurance. And that's for resident protection. So back in the 80s, there was a prominent bankruptcy of a large life plan community. And so the state of North Carolina said, we don't want that happening in our state as folks come in and invest a lot of money in these communities. So they wanted to make sure and protect our folks. So what they do is they um, require us to do an annual disclosure statement and they look at our contracts, they look at our audits, they make us do a five-year forecast to make sure that we have adequate cash and reserves. They, they make us keep 25% of our cash flows on reserve. Um, they also monitor our expansions. So, you know, that's to, to protect you guys when you come in and invest in our community, any community in North Carolina. Um, there's that layer of protection, and it is looked on very favorably by banks and uh, Fitch rating, which I'll talk about in just a minute. Um, another thing that is given to states that is not unique, but only 1% of, of life plan communities in the United States get accredited by CARF. CARF is, stands for the Commission on Accreditation of Rehab Facilities. And that's a very important step. They come through and look at all our policies, procedures, our healthcare outcomes, what we do. They look at our financial statements. They look at our forecast. They look at many of the way we do things and our healthcare outcomes. They look at um, our medical records. There is so much they look at. And um, you know what they're doing is they're making sure that we also have best practices. And since they do accredit quite a number of communities, they do know best practices. And um, you know, one of the things that we get out of this, if we do have any deficiencies, it usually shows up during the accreditation process. And we you know, will correct that and try to, to be the best we can be. Uh, one of the things they do is they do check every year they check our financial ratios. And I do wanna say that for 10 of the 17 ratios they monitor, we're in the top quartile. And 16 out of 17 of the ratios, we're in the top 50%. The one that one little outlier, we're very close to the 50% uh, quartile. So um, we, we're doing very well financially. 
Uh, Fitch Ratings, uh, they are a international credit rating agency, and they're one of the big three that's recognized by the United States uh, Securities and Exchange Commission. They rate many companies, you know, everything from General Motors to Canada, you name it, um, they, they put ratings on organizations. So Gibbons Estates is rated triple B plus with a positive outlook. Triple B plus is investment grade rating and the um, positive outlook means we're right there on the cusp of being moved up a rating. Um, we just had this done uh, recently. We just went through our annual meeting with them. You know, COVID was going on uh, during that process. There's lots of industry uh, downgrades going on, but we were able to maintain our rating during that process. And one of the things that Fitch focuses on, it's not just our financial situation. They also focus on marketing and wait list. And they look at the local economy and the local real estate market. And the reason that's important is because the pipeline for folks come in the life plan communities, it's good for the real estate market to be robust because people usually are going to sell their houses to, to invest in a life plan community. And <clears throat> I just want to point out one of the things that we're very fortunate for that came out. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but this is an article from the Asheville Citizens Times that came out on May 16th. And it's the title is Despite Coronavirus Pandemic, Asheville's real estate market remains strong. So we, we the market, there's there's so much demand and not enough supply right now. So the market is holding up really well for the real estate market. And it's my understanding that a number of our folks um, on the call today are in the Asheville area. So that is very important that when you want to sell your house and come to give into states that the market is there and you won't have trouble selling your house. We hope that continues to hold up. It's been a hot market for a long time. And given to states, or not just given to states, but Asheville has been on many, many lists, uh, top places to retire, top places to live, top places to be in the outdoors. So um, it's a great area to move to if you're not used to, to being in the Asheville area. Uh, I wanted to just talk about, um, uh, occupancy is very important for them too, that we are keeping our occupancy up. Um, our financial ratios are very good for them. Okay, so I also will point out audit. We, we are audited every year by Dixon Hughes Goodman, and I've been here 25 years, and we have had one minor adjustment to our financials one of those years. So the important thing is when we're doing our financial statements, they're very important to us, and we want the folks that have to rely on those documents that to know that, you know, those are accurate numbers and, um, you know, we, that we do a good job and people can rely on what we're putting out. Okay, so why does all that stuff matter about our financial, um, how strong we are? Because one thing is, this is a capital intensive industry. It takes lots of capital to keep this going. So right now we're in the middle of three projects that are, total around $50 million in cost. So, and we're gonna be wrapping these up next year. One of these is we're doing a big renovation here at Gibbons Estates with dining and wellness. And um, that alone is nine and a half million dollars. So we're doing the entire $50 million and we're gonna come out next year and we will have entirely, we will not have any debt at all from these projects. So we're able to do that. We are doing some short-term financing. But the, the thing about that is, you know, when you move to a community and you're investing in it, you want to make sure it's strong, first of all, so that if anything happens that, you know, you don't have to worry about the community going bankrupt or anything else. So another thing is being rated financially is that a lot of people look favorably up on that. And so we are able to access markets at a very cheap rate. We also can access the, the bond markets. Um, so, and the higher rate you are, the cheaper it is to get capital. 
So, so those are the most important things for you is to know you're investing in a strong organization and you don't have to, to, to worry so much about, you know, we're, we're going to keep the facility up and, you know, that we're not a, a risk of being bankrupt. Um, also, you know, just keeping up the campus in general, you want to make sure we have the cash to do that. Um, you want to protect your inv investment. And one thing I want to point out too, we go back to leadership, um, that um, when the Great Recession happened, um, a lot of people had, you know, it was very hard time, especially for our industry, but it wasn't our first rodeo. We've seen hard times before and we're seeing this now, but we actually in 2009 was one of our strongest years financially that we've ever had. So um, we were able to react to what was going on and maintain the marketing, maintain the facilities and cut our cost. And, um, you know, we, we were able to address the situation. We didn't lose occupancy or anything else at that time, like lots of other, uh, and like lots of other communities did. Also, I want to point out, as, as I get through that, I want to say that Friendship Park was designed to be, uh, when we were looking at it, it's very important to us to design that to be one of the most affordable options that we have on this campus. So, and I think we've achieved that for a new product. It's very affordable. I also want to say that point out that, you know, if you're concerned about your financial situation, generally we look for assets that are two times what your entrance fee is, and we look for income that's two times what your income is, but all that stuff is bearable. I mean, there may be things that you have a lot of assets, so that would affect, you know, what your income would be looking for on the income side. And we also use um, software that marketing uses to help you assist from uh, Brad Breeding and the My Life Site um, website. It's a very prominent website for folks to look at for financial planning that are looking at communities like us. So um, and just to sum everything up, I, real quickly, you know, if you're considering us, we're a nonprofit. We do Medicare, Medicaid, tax exemptions, and we have endowments. We have um, great leadership. We're state regulated. Um, we're Fitch rated. Um, and, you know, our local areas, we're one of the best places in the nation to retire or live at. So I think that concludes my thing. I may have went a little over, so I'm sorry. No, you're good. Great, great information, Alan. We appreciate it. I do have a follow-up question I just love to ask you, um, and it may be on the minds of some people. You know, in working with communities, we find also that um, many of the residents uh, or, or potential residents you know, have a CPA or a financial advisor that they work with. Um, and I think you would probably back up. You, you're you more than welcome to um, have those people attend, uh, do, a, do a conference call or whatever, just to get more information about how this works. Because I think even in the financial sector with advisors and CPAs and things like that, they don't fully understand all of the benefits of a senior living community. Can you just talk a minute about that and how that process works? If you're to speak with somebody and what you talk about? Um, if you're speaking with a financial advisor about giving yeah. to states, um, you know, I would, I would try to get a financial advisor that's a little bit familiar with organizations like us. Um, so, so, sorry about that right there. That's my chicken, and when I get into numbers to keep people awake, sometimes I use that. But, but anyway, <laughs> going back to the the the, the financial <laughs> my lap. Uh, anyway, on the the financial advisor, try to get somebody that knows a little bit about our industry. Um, there's there like I say, there can be tax advantages. Um, they can help you, you know, with the assets you have and and plan this out. Um, and I don't know that I'm entirely answering your question there. No, James, you are. Right? Yeah. I mean, obviously everybody at Gibbons is open to speaking with a financial planner if need be, but the, the point here is um, sometimes they're not as, as versed as maybe they could be. And you're all 
obviously welcome to um, and open to helping educate and figure out what those options could be for a potential resident, correct? Yes, absolutely. Great. Okay. Thank you, Alan. We may be coming back to you if we've got some time at the end for some questions. Um, but what I'd like to do now is turn it over to Leslie Lang. And Leslie Lang is our great marketing representative. And Leslie's going to give you basically the lay of the land of, okay, well, what is this all about? How does this work? And where do we go from here? Okay. All right. So just to ha have a heads up, the presentation slideshow that we have will be emailed out to you. It will serve as a lot of notes and reminders of a lot of the information that I'm about to go through with you. And of course, this is why I have a job. So put me to work. I'm happy to schedule phone appointments with you to talk about your particular situation. So we're talking on a high level view of how the structure of all these financial things work. But first, I want to start with kind of the big picture of the industry. So we are given to states is a CCRC that stands for Continuing Care Retirement Community. But the industry has introduced another term, which is life plan communities. So if you're hearing both of those terms, don't let that confuse you, but do know that it's the same thing. CCRC has been the term for years and life plan communities is the new way of describing it. So again, it's the same thing. So in this industry of CCRC and life plan communities, you're going to run into a number of different contract types that are offered out there. And they are literally referred to as a type A contract, a type B contract, and a type C contract. The type A contract also has another term for it as life care. Don't confuse that with life plan. <laughs> but type A is also known as life care. Type B is also known as modified. And type C is also known as B for service. So the beautiful thing is that there's a lot of options out there. The hard thing is, is when you're looking at all these number of communities and options, whether it's this state or that state or whatnot, it can be confusing and overwhelming. So I really wanna start with educating you on those different contract types that are offered. Now, some communities will offer all contract types at that community. Most do not, but they are out there. So let's talk about A, B, and C and what that means. When you're moving into any of these types of communities, you hear about how you have a buy-in or you pay an entry fee, and then there's a monthly fee. So a common denominator with all these contract types, A, B, and C, is you pay an entry fee and a monthly fee. That entry fee, in a sense, pays for your residence, but you don't own it. So you don't have to pay taxes on it. You don't have to maintain it you have the rights to live in that residence as long as you want it or need it. So that's all of them. Type A, life care. You pay an entry fee and a monthly fee. But when you pay that entry fee, not only are you paying for that residence, you are also going to prepay upfront for all of the higher levels of care that you may or may not ever need, but you're gonna pay for it coming in the door. So, therefore, that's going to make the type A contract usually your most expensive option that is out there. Okay, so the benefit with that is that if you did move to a higher level of care, you already paid for that years in advance up front. Your monthly fee stays the same if you were to move to another level of care, but you'll pay a whole lot more coming in the door. A risk factor of that is if you get on a wait list years in advance before you're ready to move and you have a major health event, you may or may not qualify any longer to move into that community, or they may charge you some extra premiums to bring their risk factor down because they're getting their one payment up front. Okay, so there's pros and cons to all of them. We have all these choices and you'll have to figure out which one works best for you. So that's the type A. So I think type A, all in, all inclusive, all up front. 
I'm going to skip B, but I will come back to it. So then there's the type C, fee for service. So again, you pay an entry fee and a monthly fee, <clears throat> but you're not going to prepay upfront for all of those services that you may or may not ever need. You will only pay a fee for the service that you are at that time receiving. Going to the B, it's kind of a crossbreed between the A and the C. Again, you'll pay an entry fee and a monthly fee. You are not prepaying upfront. You'll pay a fee for whatever service you are at that time receiving, very, very similar to the, the C fee for service, but there's some modification in that contract. And that modification can vary from community to community. Examples of modifications that I've seen are when you or if you move to a higher level of care, you may have a set discounted rate that that contract may offer. Or maybe every year that you live in the community, you earn or bank up some free days like coupons that you can cash in. So it just depends on how that community modified their contract. So yes, this is a lot and we can talk about it individually again for you. But not every community offers all contract types. Most do not. Given to states where you're learning about today, we focus on the type C fee for service contract type. Our average move-in age is around 74. And looking at the lifespan of people's lifetime of living on our campus is somewhere around 13 years. In 2008, we started using home care services on our campus. And we're now finding that less than 10% of our residents are moving to the higher levels of care. For those that do, we're finding that they are living in the higher levels of care a much more abbreviated <laughs> amount of time because we've enhanced their independence in their independent living residence. Once people have already moved once, they don't wanna move again. They don't wanna be separated from their spouse. They want the care and services to be brought to them. So with fee for service, you only have to pay a little bit for those fees for the home care. And then maybe you need a little bit more and a little bit more home care. And then maybe at that time, you would need to move to a higher level of care. So just to recap kind of what Alan was saying, about what is offered on our campus. We have independent living, we have assisted living, skilled nursing, we also have short-term rehab, and we have the ability to care for those that have cognitive impairment on our campus as well. So having it all there, you only pay a fee for what you need. Some people ask how does long-term care insurance play into the factors? Well, those that have long-term care insurance, not everybody does, but those that do usually immediately lean towards the type C fee-for-service type. Because if you have that, that's there to help you pay for higher levels of care. Why would you wanna prepay for the higher levels of care and pay for that policy in the type A? You basically have paid for it twice. But there's factors for, for consideration with that. So A, B, and C options there. Givens is the C, fee for service. So then there's other options in the industry where you have rental and equity communities as well. A rental is usually just a rental month to month. They're much smaller. They usually don't have all levels of care. You don't pay for an entry fee, but it's just, just the month to month. Then the equity model is, it's really where you buy the residence, you own the home. And then usually it's a fee for service or maybe a modified contract for the higher levels of care that might be offered out there. So I find it important for people to kind of understand the options that are out there. And then of course, to understand which contract type is offered in a community that you consider. So Givens is a C. So some of you may or may not have received a packet or price list or anything from us yet. Um, if you have or have not, Jean, you can go to the next slide. There we go. So here is what our fee sheets look like. We offer so many different off offerings on our campus, but this is a snippet of the Friendship Park Phase Two pricing. So notice at the top, you have the entrance fee and the monthly fee. The entrance fee, again, you're paying for that residence of your choosing. You have the rights to live in that residence as long as you want it or need it. 
we then give you three different refund options to choose from. You have a 0%, a 50%, and a 90% refund option. Refunds are given to you when you no longer live on or in the campus. You may no longer live here because you've moved out or maybe you've ended your days. So zero, 50 or 90% will come back. You choose which one you want. The 0% is our least expensive option. But one thing I wanna point out is it's not 0% day one. It is a declining balance that will over a four year period of time amortize down to 0%. The 50% will take two years to amortize down to the 50%, and the 90% will take simply three months. So going back to the zero, by the way, that usually is the one that most people choose, but there's reasons for people to choose the 50 and the 90, but everybody always asks, well, what do most people do? Most people do the zero. Why? Because it's less money coming out of their investments. A lot of times when people are meeting with their financial advisors, they advise that they keep more of their own money in their investments, still making money for themselves, rather than giving it to Givens Estates for an average of 13 years. <laughs> so the 0%, it's, if you were to move into Givens Estates and you would say you only lived there for one year, that means it has not amortized all the way down to zero. So if it takes four years, easy math on that is 25% a year. However, the actual amortization schedule, those that like to play with numbers, is 6% the first month and then 2% every month thereafter until your refund option is met, which is what this slide show, shows. So the 0% will take four years, the 50% takes two years, and the 90% is after three months. So if you are on the 0%, and you now have lived here for 11 years, that's more than four years, it's down to zero. It's a really simple, easy way to clear out your estate and your trust and not having to handle anything. And the 50% after two years, it's already declined down to 50% and the refund is back to you on 50% of what you paid when you came into the community. So if you paid 300,000, you'd get 50% of that. So going back to that price sheet, Jean, if we could go back to the other one, you'll see they got all the different prices there. And then there's the monthly fee. There's a single or double occupancy rate. Are there one or two people living in that residence? So when, if it's two of you, let's just say, for instance, we're looking at the Cedar apartment and we're doing the 0%. It starts at 274. If there are two of you, moving in, you're going to have a flat rate of 15,000 added to your entry fee. Doesn't matter which one it is, zero, 50, 90, or whatever floor plan. If there's two of you, just add 15,000. And then that would be your total entry fee amount. And then there's two of you, so you have the double occupancy rate. Also on our price sheets, wanna make sure that you know that it says there in that print down at the bottom, entrance fees are starting prices, some fees may be higher. So in Friendship Park, we have some premium apartments that are walkouts or maybe one that's on the park side, one that might be on the top floor or whatever. So these are the starting prices and some of them may vary a little bit. It's not a huge amount, but there's a little bit of variance with that. So going to the next slide again, let's see. If you were to choose the 90% refund, just the caveat on that, be aware that you're gonna add $5,000 for every year over 85. That's when you're moving in to the campus. So if you are 88 when you move in and you've chosen the 90%, that's 5,000 per year. So over 85 would be 86, 87, 88. There's a premium of 15,000 added to that. Also note that it is also 90% refundable. If you're 137 years old and you're moving in and you're doing the zero or the 50, no premium, doesn't matter. <laughs> Only on the 90. Nobody likes surprises at the last minute, so I always want to point that out to everybody. So you're probably wanting to know what all is included in that monthly fee. So 
let's start with food. <laughs> Everybody's excited about their food options. And if you haven't attended all of the other previous webinars, then you're probably not aware of all the new renovations and stuff that we've got, but I'm not gonna go back through all those due to time. But as of right now, all of our independent living residents receive $238 per month per person to spend in our dining room however you wish, whether it be for a biscuit or the buffet or fine dining or a glass of wine, meal delivery, however you want, we evaluate what the average independent living resident is spending a month. Some people cook more, some people cook less. Some people eat more down in the dining room. Some people travel more, so they're not here as much. So we've got to get this average amount that makes sense to include in your monthly fee. So anywhere between like 14 to 16 full meals a month, but somebody might get more off of it or whatever. So it's not meant to be three meals a day, 30 days a month. This is independent living. And if you want three meals a day, that's more of assisted living. This is independent living. So if you get to the end of the month and you have not spent all of your money, no worries. You can carry it over to the following month. So the maximum amount that you can carry over is whatever two months is worth. So 238 times two equals 476. So it's not two months time, it's two months worth. So you can start the new month with a maximum rollover of 476 plus your new month. Yes, your guests can use that as well for your dining dollars. Now, with all of these new renovations and dining venues that are coming on, I'm sure that people will probably spike up those monthly uh, charges and checking everything out. And then we'll have to get to see what the real new normal and new average is. So we'll have to wait and see what that is going to be. Now, this, this is what it is today. By the time that Friendship Park is moving in, all these renovations will be in place. So it could be a different dining amount come that time. We'll have to wait and see. So also included in the monthly fee is weekly housekeeping. Every week, you're gonna have your assigned day and time that housekeeping comes. They're gonna vacuum dust and wipe down the kitchens, the bathrooms, and they change your linens for you every week. It does not include laundry services. We can add that for you if you want it, but you simply set out your clean linens and they will change the beds for you. All of your utilities, are included, including your phone, your cable, and your internet. We even have our own IT department here. Really big bonus. There's so many technological things now and people have a hard time figuring it all out. So we have many IT heroes here on campus. It's included in your monthly fee. Uh, we also have uh, committees of residents on our campus that like to help and teach people learn how to use that iPhone or that new Mac computer. So that's also on the campus. Interior, exterior maintenance, all the grounds are taken care of. So depending upon what kind of gardener you want, everything is on different levels for you, but nobody has to clean the gutters. Nobody has to mow the grass. So yay, all that's taken care of for you. All appliances are provided for you in the residences as well. So when we have a large number of residents here on campus, you've got to keep them all entertained and you've got a lot of variety. So we've got the wellness center, the pool, the jacuzzi, the aerobic studio, fitness center, exercise classes, hiking trails. I mean, that list could go on for a long, long time. So all that's included. Anything that you would pay extra for would be like if you were to do a book club, you'd buy your book. Or if you were going to take an art class, you would buy your supplies, but you're not going to pay to use those facilities. We have a performing arts center that holds over 300 people. It's not being used right now due to COVID, but it's also not being used because that's our temporary dining room at the, at the moment. But that will all be back into play hopefully very soon. Campus security and urgent call response. When you approach our campus, there are security guards there making sure that everybody is, is, has a purpose and a need to be on our campus right now. So it gives everybody a sense of security and safety here. And you, know, you might be living independently and doing fine and you may have some kind of a health event or you fall or whatever. 
we do have 24 hour nursing staff on site and there are urgent call response boards in all of your residents that you could pull and then someone will come immediately to check on you. We do have pendant systems that people can add to that if they wanted to, if they become a real high fall risk and they wanna have something on them at all times. That's, we don't make every single person that moves in here wear a pendant, but those are also available should you need those, but not included in the monthly fee. Scheduled transportation. Some people drive, some people don't. Some people just don't want to drive when they're going downtown. So you can call, have a driver take you to a doctor's appointment or take you to the theater. Or we have one woman that every Tuesday she likes to go to the movies. I don't think she's going right now, but there's all kinds of different avenues for transportation. The group transportation is given at least a month in advance for you to know exactly where they're going so you can sign up. Some things have fees, some things do not. Weekly, they're going to a number of uh, grocery stores every week, but then when they go to the Trader Joe's, which is across town, I think there's like a two or three dollar fee to it, but there's always something that doesn't have a fee like for Ingalls right across the street. Um, common areas and amenities, 215 acres on our campus, five miles of hiking trails, all of these things to, to keep you active on our campus. The social services one is that I really like to, to stress on because it's a, it's a big deal. There is no fee for your social services here. Every resident has a social service, social service director working with them. We find that the more that they know you when things are great, the better they can help you when things aren't so great. We haven't aged before. We don't know what ailments are gonna come. Some people don't have spouses. Some people don't have kids and you may have kids. They may live in Egypt, but how do you handle and navigate when things aren't as easy? So we have the social workers here to assist you and also to communicate with family members as well. It gives you just a good peace of mind to know that they are here for you. So some additional things that we have on the campus that are not included in the monthly fee, you see here on the bottom that says MAHEC, that's Mountain Area Health Education Center, which is a doctor's office here on campus. So if you live here locally and you have all your physicians and you wanna keep them, that is perfectly fine. But anybody that's moving from another area, you're gonna be needing all new physicians. And we know how fun that can be to dial for dollars to see who is accepting new patients. So this is like a one-stop shop for you to have your primary physician here on site if you want. It opens you up to the network of all of the other MAHEC physicians that might be specialists for you. For those of you that aren't familiar with our location, everything you need is within two miles of our community. Doctors, the hospital is just right down the road as well. So also on campus, they're in the Mayhek clinic, there's a drop-in clinic. So if you do or you don't have your doctor at the, at the Mayhek clinic, but what if you just don't feel well today and you wanna have your temperature checked or have some lab work done or Coumadin management, that sort of thing. The drop-in clinic is open certain hours every day. It's there for you. Pharmacy, we have the Sona Pharmacy here on campus, 24 hour free delivery to your door. We do have a location that's open certain hours where you can go in and pick up items, cough drops or Tylenol, et cetera. You can get those there. Beauty shop, barber shop, you can get your hair done, your nails done. You can have pedicures done or just um, clippings as well. Medical massage, acupuncture, face, facials, and Reiki, all those additional things are there for you as well. But those are additional fees, but it sure is nice to have it right here on the campus. We do also have occupational therapy, speech therapy, and physical therapy on the campus as well. So that's how some of the fees and things work here. If you do have long-term care insurance and you want me to help you evaluate how your policy can help you, I have a list of questions that I can email to you to help you decipher your policy. So feel free to email me and let me know. Also feel free to let me know if you want me to help you evaluate what is the best financial picture for you. 
Alan quickly was talking about a lot of things and he was quickly going over financial qualifications. And I'm not gonna go into that huge um, algorithm and calculations of how that is being done. It can depend upon age. And some, we do the times two, times two he was talking about with the entry fee and the monthly fee. If the entry fee is 200,000, we'd wanna see that you had at least 400,000. But the monthly portion, a lot of people don't always have times two with the monthly fee. So that's where we start talking individually and looking at the overall picture of your finances. So I am happy to help you uh, decipher and go through all of that as well and look at any long-term care insurance policies. I would say less than 30% of our residents here have long-term care insurance, but those that do, we wanna make sure that you understand how that benefit can help you on the campus. <sighs> okay, that was a lot. That was a lot. <laughs> hey, nicely done. That was a lot of information <laughs> in a short amount of time. Well done. Um, we do have a couple of questions that came in and maybe we can get to some of these. Um, if we can't get to a question that you've put in the Q&A, um, like I said at the beginning, Leslie will be reaching out to you and um, trying to answer, but there's a few in here. Um, one is uh, from Robert. Could you go through the waiting list details? Sure, okay, so our wait list People are ready to move right away or people are planning way out in the future. So we've got two lists. I've got a wait list and a ready list. We start with the wait list and it's a thousand dollar deposit per household, not per person, but it's a thousand dollars. The date that you pay your deposit, you are given your wait list date. You never lose that date. So people that are waiting, are not ready, so I don't call the people that are waiting. So you tell me when you are ready to be notified of openings and I move you over to the ready list and everybody is placed on that list in order of their original wait list date. So the sooner you get that date established, the more advantage you give yourself when you are ready. So that thousand dollar deposit is fully applied towards your entry fee. Also, while you're on the wait list, we give you access to all of our amenities, the programs, the classes. We want you to be able to be a part of the community. We want you to have an opportunity to see if this is a community where you want to be. I will pause and say that due to COVID, we obviously can't have all 700 people on our wait list coming in and out of the campus right now. So that is on pause for right now. But you are receiving the newsletters, you're getting all of the updates, the menus, and seeing all the things that are going on on our campus. But also while you're on the wait list, we give you access to our higher levels of care. I've been here almost 10 years, and I cannot tell you how many times someone being on the wait list has been a benefit. Somebody has needed a knee surgery and they needed short-term rehab, or maybe it's something more serious where one of them or the individual needs a higher level of care. So between our residents that are here on campus, who of course would always have top priority for openings, between residents and our waitlist depositors, our community stays full. So you want to pick a community for you and you're planning to at least be on one wait list and ask if you have access to the campus should there be a curveball that your life has thrown you. So that wait list comes as a benefit for that as well. Now, the extra added benefit is that we have Friendship Park right now. There are a few limited numbers available of the apartments. So you can go directly to reserving a place, whereas the wait list is you don't know when you're moving or you have no idea when it's gonna come available, but at least you're on the list to be notified. So when you do your deposit, it's $1,000, your date is established. It's fully refundable for 30 days. And then after 30 days, it is half refundable. Great, quick, quick follow-up question on that question. Um, can waitlist people use the hiking trails? Today, no, but normally non-COVID, absolutely. Okay, great. 
Um, so this is kind of a complicated one, but it was a, it's a good question and one I haven't heard before. Um, Anonymous says, should we come in as a couple and we pay additional buy-in for the monthly fee if my spouse passes, mm -hmm. uh, am I allowed to have my sister move in with me? So we have had situations like that come up before. And so on the broader answer to that, you do not have to be married to live here. So you can have a sister or cousin or someone move in with you, same sex couples, the whole thing. So if in this particular situation, if someone is married, someone passes away, can someone, her sister, whatever, move in? Yes, but we will also have to have a sit down and make sure that what if the original resident passed away, that second person that came in, if they are now in that location by themselves, can they afford that place? And then we would need to know what is gonna be a good plan for them with other options in our campus. So luckily our campus, we offer all price points, so we would already have something in place. But we also can't have someone just move in for $15,000. So we would have to evaluate what's gonna be the best fit, and then that person would pay the balance of the entry fee of where they decide to finally reside in on the campus. Gotcha. I hope that was clear. That was yeah, a little right. right. okay. Um And I think you've mentioned this, but just just because we're getting ready to wrap up here in a minute, can you just talk about the process of you um, making arrangements for people to come visit if they do want to visit during COVID and what's going on right now? Okay. All right. So I'm not just doing tours and one-on-one -on -one with every single person that's looking at 10 plus years of moving into the campus. Luckily, Jean has uh, really been working diligently and I think today <laughs> with our drone photographer who, who is helping us put together basically a drive-through. A lot of people are asking, can I just drive through? Can I just drive through? The answer is no, you can't just drive through because you're not attended and we've got to make sure that the residents and the employees all feel safe as well because if they're not attended, how do you know that they're not getting out of their car? So uh, with the drone photography and the narration, it will be like driving through and having a tour on campus without having to be here. Now that's not everything, but hey, it's a start, right? So is it even worth traveling right now to, to even go? So that will be the, the first level for someone to to take on that'll be available on our website. But then also I'm filling up my days with FaceTime appointments one-on-one -on -one in my car, driving one-handed with my camera, my phone out the window <laughs> and looking at things and, and walking through the campus. So that's another way. So someone who is seriously considering, and I have to have you on my wait list first. Remember it's fully refundable for 30 days. So we could get you established on the wait list. We can see what it is that I have available. Is that gonna be a good fit for you? And then we can schedule a tour in person. And we will have to have you answer the screening questions. You will have to wear a mask at all times. Your temperature will be checked. And we do ask you to wash your hands before you come in the door. So <laughs> there's our, there are ways to do that. Okay. Great, thank you for those answers. Um, I would like to thank Alan and Leslie and Jean for their time today, uh, for giving uh, additional time to talk more about the dollars and cents at Friendship Park and at Givens Estates. Um, I would like to remind everybody that there is in this web series, in this webinar series, there is another upcoming webinar um, and it will be kind of different and exciting. We're actually going to have some residents um, that can be on a panel and they'll get some questions. We'll have some preloaded questions for them, but then we're going to also um, want the people who are on the webinar to do some questions for them as well. And really what we'd like to do is allow those people to really speak about living at Gibbons Estates, what it's like to live in the different neighborhoods at, at Gibbons and um, what it is like basically to have that lifestyle. And so um, that's gonna be really exciting. It is on uh, the 16th um, and um, it's gonna be a great, great uh, webinar as well. And by the way, that is at 3 p.m. as well. 
So make sure that if you haven't already, please sign up for that. Um, Leslie will reach out to you if there were other questions that were asked that we didn't get to answer during our webinar. Leslie will certainly reach out to you. If you have any questions at all, there's some contact information that we've got on the screen right now. Um, you can email Leslie or feel free to call her at any time. And um, I'm sure she'd be happy to return your call and discuss what your needs might be. So thank you so much, Gene. If there's anything else um, that you'd like to throw in, feel free. If not, let's close it out. I just wanted to mention quickly that on that friendshipparklive.org site, they can also view the pre -re the recorded webinars that you know they may have missed the other two. Oh. So those recordings are available to you if you want to backtrack and see what other topics we talked about. Great. And we also want people, if they can, to follow us on social media. So if you go to Facebook and you do a search for Gibbons Estates, um, if you follow the page, there'll be great information. There's great images that come through. Um, there's a lot of great information that comes through on the Facebook page. And then also, if you go to that Friendship Park Live site, um, there's a lot of other information on there that will also lead you back to the Givens Estates website as well. So thank you all for joining us today. We hope everybody stays healthy and, and, uh, and happy, and we will see you on the 16th. We're looking forward to it. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you.